What's going on everybody, it's Charles. In this video, we are gonna be installing an all-track belly pan onto the Golf R. One of the beautiful things about the MQB platform is so many things transfer over to different cars. That means we can get rid of the floppity belly pan that comes on the Golf R and put a pretty awesome reinforced pan from the Alltrack on it. Now, as you guys may or may not know, this car has a plastic oil pan and that is something that makes myself and plenty of the rest of you guys a little uneasy all the way up to terrified. There are metal oil pan replacements. If that's a route you'd like to go, I'm, I'm for that. But even then, the belly pan on the car doesn't cover the oil pan. So if something pops up and hits it, you still have the potential for a leak. The all-track belly pan is not only reinforced, but it covers the entire section. So it covers the oil pan, it covers the whole transmission. We don't have to worry nearly as much about it. And it installs pretty straightforward. Now you're looking behind me going, Charles, you got the bumper cover off. I'm scared. I don't want to do this job. Don't make me do it. It's okay. You can actually do this job without taking the bumper cover off. I, however, have the bumper cover off for a completely separate video and thought this would be a perfect opportunity to actually show you guys how to install the brackets that you need to properly mount the all-track belly pan. I was able to put this belly pan on the first time without taking the bumper cover off. You gotta kinda shove your hand up in an unhappy spot, but it can be done. First thing that we're gonna need to do is remove the floppity factory belly pan. That's done pretty easily by just removing the T25 Torx down the sides and the one at the very front. All right, this is our factory floppy pan. Let's compare this one to our new all-track belly pan. All right, here is our factory belly pan. As you can see, rather small, kind of wiggly, and just held on with some T25 Torx, which is pretty common for these style of belly pans. And this is our all-track belly pan. As you can see, this guy is quite a bit beefier than the flimsy factory pan. Now, in order to install that, we're going to need the pan, of course. We can use the T25s that we removed back for this pan. We'll need two brackets for the mounting points at the front of the pan. Then we'll need nine bolts to bolt the pan up. Two of those bolts are gonna hold the brackets to the frame rail, and the rest of them are gonna hold the pan on. Now, this is quite a bit bigger of a belly pan, and of course, it's as you can see, it's reinforced. Also, big ups to Paul and the boys at Shop Dap for putting this together for us. I'll be sure to link this up for you guys in the video description if you wanna check it out. Just like for the things like the spare tire kit, Paul is my go-to dude for these kind of things. Before we put this on, let's weigh this stuff and see what we're actually adding weight-wise to the car. Let's go ahead and start with our two brackets. So it looks like we got 1.1 pound for brackets. There'll be a negligible amount of hardware, but the big boy is the belly pan itself. We'll call that right about 10 pounds. I think that's the max of my scale. And just for fun, let's see what the OE pan on the R weighs. Two pounds, we'll call that two pounds. So we're adding about nine pounds or so to the front of the car. Honestly, for the extra protection that provides, that's a pretty negligible amount. It doesn't really matter. I'm not trying to do weight reduction bro on this car. So let's go ahead and get it installed. All right, so we have our two brackets that we have to install. We have a left one and a right one. If you're not sure which is which, the one that goes on the passenger side has this curve to it, and the driver's side one is pretty straight. The other way we can tell is if we find the part number, which is right there, we'll notice that that last digit ends in a one. That's a driver's side or a left side of the vehicle. So if you ever see a part number that ends in an odd number, that means it goes on the left side of the car. So we're gonna mount those brackets right here on the frame rail of the car. Here's our horn, here's our bumper itself, here is our frame rail. And this bracket is gonna go up right behind where the frame rail is. Something else we also have to pay attention to, you'll notice there's a tiny little tab right there. That also has to go into a groove at the back of this frame rail here. All right, so once we have our bracket kind of set in place and our bolt started, we wanna make sure that that little notch on the bracket lines up with the hole in the frame rail of the car. 
we can go ahead and snug our bolt down. Something that I did when I installed this is I got this snug and then I put the belly pan on so that we could make sure that it all lined up. Pretty much the same thing for the driver's side. We have our notch in the bracket. We actually even have a little bit more room on the driver's side too. We'll go ahead and get that lined up. Make 100% sure that the notch is in the hole on the frame rail. Next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna get the belly pan bolted up so that we can make any adjustment needed to our brackets. At the front, you do have to lift it above the core support and let it drop in. There's almost like a little hook at the front, so this needs to be set properly. Then just go ahead and start your bolts by hand. Now this may take some moving back and forth of the bracket or shifting of the belly pan to get everybody lined up and happy. Next, go ahead and tighten down all the bolts on the belly pan. Once those are all snugged down, we can go ahead and tighten the bolts that hold the bracket to the car. Now what happens if you don't have the bumper cover off and you need to get to tighten these bolts down? We're well, still gonna follow the rest of the procedures the same way that I showed you. However, there is a magic tool, this gear wrench extended reach ratcheting wrench that works wonders for this job. So you're gonna get your bolt started, you're gonna get everything sort of set, then you're gonna take this wrench up from the bottom, slowly tighten this bolt down. If you do it that way, you won't have to remove the bumper cover in order to tighten it. There's probably other tools you can get up there with as well, some other ratcheting wrenches. I like this one though, because it flexes just a little bit and it's super duper long, so you have plenty of reach. Let's say you don't want to take the bumper cover off and you don't want to shove your hand up in that uncomfortable spot, or you don't have that wrench in order to tighten that bolt. There is another way to do it, and I think this is the way most people probably do it. On the corners of your bumper cover where this lower grill is, is a tiny opening all the way in the back. You can take a long extension with a wobble socket on it, and go right through here to get access to that bolt. If you're gonna do that, I would recommend maybe putting some tape on your bumper cover so you don't damage it. There's of course gonna be one on the driver's side and there's gonna be one on the passenger side that you can gain access to that bolt through. It's pretty tough to see the bolt, but if you look through this opening, you'll be able to see it with a flashlight. Once you have the brackets that hold the front of the belly pan secured, go ahead and tighten that belly pan down, put your torque screws back in and you're good to go. You got some reinforcement happening on the bottom of your car, protecting that plastic oil pan. Now, that's all fine and good. Let's go ahead and test out just how strong this all-track belly pan really, really is. So here is our factory belly pan in it, all of its wiggly, floppy glory. Uh, we're not gonna do any testing on this one. We're just going to toss that one to the side. Here is our all-track belly pan that we are gonna do some testing on. Of course, officially, we're gonna simulate what it would be like if something were to impact the bottom of your car and how it would protect your plastic oil pan. Or we're just gonna drop stuff on it till it breaks. First up, we're gonna just start with a simple mallet. I think this is a two pound hammer and we're dropping it from, well, I don't know, eight feet or so. I'm gonna aim for that leaf. All right, barely a little scratch on it. Let's go ahead and up our game a little bit with a 15 pound dumbbell. I'm not very strong, so you know, there's that. Oh, this is scary. You know what, before we drop this, I'm kind of wondering how much force is actually going to be hitting this belly pan. For that, let's consult my favorite internet expert and whiteboard aficionado, Jason from Engineering Explained. Jason, what are we talking about here? Okay, so we've got a 15 pound dumbbell. We're dropping it from eight feet. Now the math is actually pretty simple here. So distance equals one half acceleration times time squared. Time equals 0.7 seconds. Hang on, hang on, hang on, dude. That's, that's like all fun and good, but um, I think people just wanna see this get smashed. Yeah, you're probably right, Charles. Just go ahead and smash it. Barely a scuff. Let's do that one again from a little higher. Smash it. Now 
not even a mark on the inside of it, except a little bit where it hit the concrete. Even though it's pretty rigid, it does have some flex to it. All right, so there we go. Uh, not gonna say it's indestructible, but we put it through a pretty hardcore torture test and it held up really, really well. With that, I'm gonna wrap it up, guys. Thank you so much for watching and I'll talk to you again next time. And I'm just gonna keep hitting this with a hammer because I'm basically 12.